Okay, we're going to be doing another tank guide, this time focused on D.Va. So very quickly talking about her stats initially, she has 350 health plus 300 armor, so 650 total. That makes her one of the tankiest tanks in the game on paper. In reality, she's actually a lot squishier than most other tanks like Ryan and Arisa because her defensive mitigation is not nearly as good, and she often is putting herself in a position where she's going to take a lot of damage. So she will feel squishier than other tanks despite having a lot of health and armor. Her fusion cannons, her main gun, does 146 damage per second, uh, falls off pretty quickly though, starting at 10 meters up to 20. It has a lot of spread, so once you're at the 10 meter mark, you're already doing way less damage unless you're shooting a tank. Her micro missiles, which last about a second and a half, do 126 damage total, so that's about 77 DPS, which means if you add the fusion cannons plus her missiles together, that's a, that's 217 damage per second for a second and a half, which is a lot, <laughs> right? That's enough to kill a squishy hero, right? Any of the 200 health heroes, you can kill them in a second and a half, not including a melee or bump damage from boosters, etc. Like, you can kill people very, very quickly. Um, defensive Matrix absorbs all projectiles, including many ultimates that people aren't aware of. Um, it lasts for three seconds total at max charge, and it takes six seconds to fully charge. Her boosters, you can use every four seconds, so you can use those pretty freely, I would say. Only does 15 damage now, down from, I think it used to do 30 or 35 in the beta. Uh, when she does lose her mech, she enters pilot form, which gives her 150 health and a really dinky gun. Uh, she charges mech ulti very, very quickly, though, which allows her to get back into the mech. It does 250 damage if you squish people with it in a very small 2.5 meter radius. And then her self-destruct, which I'm sure everybody's aware of, her diva bomb does up to 1,000 damage out to 20 meters, a linear decreasing with damage, I think, down to 100. So at, at 0 meters, it does 1,000. At 20 meters, it does about 100 damage. Okay, so let's talk about diva tips. Um, number one, do not lose mech. <laughs> I cannot emphasize this enough. Treat losing the mech as worse than if you died. Because typically when you lose mech in baby diva form, your impact of the fight is near zero. And it takes you some time to farm mech and get it back. So in many situations, it's actually better to just, if you could just die, like suicide your mech off a cliff, for example, and then immediately come back, or I mean not immediately, like respawn as mech, versus like staying in Diva, Diva, baby diva form, spending 10 seconds, 10-15 seconds to like actually die because you're like trying to stay alive, usually the wrong call. Do not lose your mech. <laughs> I think it's very easy to tell who are good diva players and who are bad diva players by how often they lose their mech and what they do after they lose the mech, right? Good diva players are like, oh, I lost my mech, the fight's over, I just jump off a cliff or run at the support and make them kill me. Okay, bad diva players are like, oh, I lost the mech, maybe I can get my mech back. And they like sit in the distance and they poke and they try to get the mech back in bad situations, which just forces a stagger. Number two, use your missiles only when you're close to enemies. Despite the fact that they don't have any fall off damage and you can do damage from a long way away, you typically don't want to be doing that. You want to save it to burst down someone really, really quickly. Um, so don't pop missiles as a form of spam. Just do them up close when you're diving on someone, preferably. Number three, you are a jack of all trades, master of none. Um, Diva is not great at close range combat. She's not great at mobility. She is not great at absorbing or mitigating damage, but she's okay to good at all of those things. So if the enemy is really, really good at close range, don't fight at close range. If the enemy is really good, good at long range, fight at close range, right? So a lot of Diva is about the flexibility that you have as a hero, understanding how to disengage from bad fights and choose better fights. And of course, all the heroes want to do that, but D.Va has more ability to actually do so, right? You can choose, hey, I'm going to go for a flank. I'm going to take high ground. I'm going to brawl, right? I'm going to focus on reducing damage incoming to my team. I'm going to focus on dealing damage to the enemy team, right? You have all those choices to D.Va where many other heroes do not. Number four, as I mentioned previously, you do 217 damage per second, not including headshots, for one and a half seconds, which is one of the highest burst windows in the game. Burst down squishy targets. Any 200 health hero who is out of position, you can just almost instantly kill them faster than they can react. It also means that you can duel or trade with tanks briefly um, for that second and a half, and usually after that you tend to fall off in terms of effectiveness. Number five, as a rule of thumb, use your bomb ultimate as a second life not to get kills so it's very common for new diva players where they chuck the bomb in there to be like oh i wonder if i'll get a kill don't do that do not gamble that way unless you really really know what you're doing and you're going to watch through this playthrough where i typically don't throw bombs randomly i'm only going to throw bombs when i know for sure it will get a kill because i've seen i know the terrain i know people cannot escape and i know they don't have defensive cooldowns to get to like avoid it those are the only times i'm really checking the bomb otherwise i'm typically just using once i have diva ult I use the opportunity to be very aggressive with my mech, and I can re-mech if needed in order to get the get the mech back, uh, or bomb as needed to get my mech back. Number six, off angle all the time. You generally don't want to be playing straight down main. 
because you're just not great at that, right? You're not that tanky. You don't have like a Risa spin. You don't have a shield. So you typically want to play slightly off main, right? Applying pressure to the tank or going after the squishies, whatever, whatever it may be. Again, you'll see a lot of examples of that in the gameplay. Number seven, for defense matrix, you typically want to DM cooldowns, not damage, okay? So for example, for Soldier, you want to absorb his Helix rocket. His regular gunfire, not that big a deal, right? People don't normally die to his regular gunfire without having a chance to like escape or take cover or heal or whatever it is. But the Helix rocket does 120 damage burst, so someone might die very quickly to that plus some gunfire or other spam damage if they don't realize it. So typically you're not going to be DMing all that much damage. It's mostly about stopping the other team from bursting down your team or stopping important cooldowns like sleep, for example, or ultimates like grav. All right. So with that, let's start the game. So this is starting on King's Row. I do not think King's Row is a great map for D.Va. It's very linear. It's very Brawly, right? I think Ryan, Zarya are classically the heroes that are played on this map. Um, you're going to see I'm going to be playing into a Zarya, which is probably one of the worst tanks that you can play into. But fortunately, I am a better D.Va than they are Zarya, so it's going to work out pretty well. So I start initially, right? So I see the Zarya. So you, I know the range of her beam, and you notice I stand outside of the range of her beam. Without, without being in her beam range, she's really not that dangerous to me. So I'm just going to chill here. You see, I'm not even bothered to shoot because I'm not going to do that much damage. I'm waiting for my team to group up with me. Right now that I can feel my team's coming up, I'm going to start engaging. And you notice that the angle that I engage is someplace where I can shoot the Zarya and the rest of my team can shoot the Zarya, but they cannot shoot me. Right? I'm around this corner, right, off angling over here. So the, the Zarya has to step around the corner to fight me. She doesn't want to do it because she's low. I see that she's used that. That's her first bubble, I believe. Yeah, that's her first bubble. So now I start putting pressure. The second bubble gets popped. Right, right away, and I know this because I'm trying to burst her down right now to create space. I know the Zen is here, and I know that we're both applying damage to the Zarya. So, attack her, right? She's getting pretty low. And the thing is, I also knew the angle where she was, her team cannot heal her easily because she's around the corner. See, over here, you cannot actually heal the Zarya, which is going to force the supports to swing wide, which opens chances for my DPS to get kills. So, even though she has a bubble here, I knew that that was her last bubble, and then I kill her. Uh, did she actually have bubble at the time? She's probably pretty close here. Nope. See, she still has three seconds before her bubble pops up. This is a great example of how to play against Zarya. Right? I see her over here. I'm staying out of range. She can't do anything. She steps, she's trying to she's trying to bubble for to get charged. Great. Fantastic. Right? Now I'm trying to blow her up. I use missiles to blow up her second bubble right away. She only has 300 health. Right? I shoot her. I know she's around the corner, so she can't get healed. I bump into her, right? Get a little more melee damage, and then kill her. Sometimes it's that easy, right? If the other tank makes a mistake, that's that easy. After I kill her, I don't greed, right? I just want to uh, DM, make sure I don't get demacked, right? And make sure, like, I get kind of my bearings on what the situation is. I apply pressure here. Again, with him being healed by the Kirko nonstop, I know I can't realistically kill him. So I'm mostly just buying time so that he can't do anything to my team. And you'll notice that I'm actually going to move to his side here. And the reason being, I know he wants to attack my team and not me. So if I move to the side, if he wants to attack my team, he's going to be strafing like this, which is not moving at all from my perspective because I have flanked him. And that makes it very easy for me to land both my shotguns and my missiles on him. You see, now I start bursting down very quickly, which forces him right away to start turning to target me to, so that he can dodge. Right now he does left right dodging, which is a lot more effective. I matrix here to try to lay alive. I see purple go off and then kill him. Right, nice and easy. Uh, straightforward take. Again, usually it won't be that easy, but it sometimes will happen. I step forward here. I see Zarya's out there. She's forced bubble. She's super low. I go and try to kill her. Uh, it was mostly my team just headshotting. Right, go for the Kiriko. Killer, great. I go high ground to stop the snipers. I know both snipers are up here shooting at my team. I DM to make sure that I don't lose mech. Once I turn away, I know I'm not going to lose mech. That's why I don't uh, bother DMing the last bit. I go for the Zen. I know the Zen's back here too. The Zen can heal the other two, but they can't heal the Zen, which is why I go here for the Zen right away. I don't have missiles. Or, if I had missiles, I would have popped them here. I just didn't expect to get a kill here, which is why I don't bother waiting for it. I'm mostly concerned about avoiding these two snipers to get picks on my team, which is why I'm going right now. It's a lot less important to me than getting the kills. They re peek me, which I'm like, okay, cool. Hanzo dies. Come back up. I see the Zen. Right, get him a little. See, I force bubble. I immediately walk away. Sorry, I just wasted bubble. Kiriko looking at me instead of looking at the team. All right, you see this Kiriko right here. Uh, is she looking at me? Burn bright for me? Yeah, she's looking at me and then she gets headshot. See, that's that's the advantage. This is what's called an off angle, right? Someplace that is not the main route where everyone's going to go. This is the main route, so people are thinking, oh, hey, this, there's, they're going to come down main. I stand on an off angle. Everyone turns, looks at me, walks in the open, gets killed by the Widow. 
I'm gonna take this high ground right now. Again, I can't do a lot. I like if I started shooting at the Zen Lazari right now, I'm doing like 10, 15 damage a second maybe. It's not relevant. I'm doing this right now just to force them to not walk forwards. Because Azaria isn't going to walk over here if I'm just standing behind her, and I'll bump her forward and kill her. So just by standing here, even not shooting, prevents the Zarya from walking forwards. And this is what's taking spaces. Right. I'm going over here. I went. I uh, turned back just briefly to see if I can get a little bit of healing, but nobody was around. So I'm pushing the Zen back, right? The Zen is going to see me... Uh, right, take this high ground. And then he's already rotating. I see the Zen go, so I'm going over here to make sure that the Zen can't go high ground, for example. I can also blow him up by standing above him and shooting straight down. So again, Zarya is like, hmm, what do I do here? <laughs> right? Like, theoretically, the Zarya beats me straight on, but because he doesn't have an opportunity to actually even attack me, and I've controlled high ground, he has to keep, or she has to keep backing up here. Right? Again, I'm not actually doing any damage to the Zarya. I'm simply forcing her back just with my positioning. I stand over here. Okay, now she's the back of the choke, right? And then I stand over here, and now she's the back of even further. And I could have dove here, but I'm not going to because she still has bubble, and our team's going to be here in a second. Now I drop down because I really want to force the Zarya back. Regroup with the team. And then we'll basically just run this again. So Zarya's getting very, very aggressive, right? She's pretty far up right now. I ignore the Zarya completely because it's just not my job to deal with the Zarya. I cannot kill the Zarya when she has bubbles and she's being pocketed. So instead, I go for the back line. All right, missling. Again, the Zarya backs up here. You see that I'm worried about being DMX, so I'm staying on high ground in angles where they cannot see me. All right, so over there. See, I'm flying. I'm like mostly out of vision, like out of frame for the snipers. I come back here. I get healed up. So I think I recognize right now the Zarya only has one bubble left. Yeah. I know the Zarya's only one bubble left because I've been counting the whole time. So I'm going to blow up this bubble right away with missiles intentionally, force, sorry, forced out Suzu, and I immediately pop back, or uh, Diva Bomb. And I get a kill. But watch how methodical this is. Okay, I'm tracking everything that's going on. I see Zarya use bubble work right now, so she's down to zero or one bubbles. Okay, I just know that she cannot possibly have more than one bubble at this point in time. All right, I go up. I do this, I immediately pop missiles when I see the, the bubble, right? I know that, that, that she has no more bubbles. This is very intentional. I almost kill her, which forces the Suzu out. Again, without Suzu, that would have that killed her. I toss the bomb in this direction. Oh my god, this bomb is so good. <laughs> oh man, that's just instinct. It's really hard to, to do bombs correctly. You, you need to do it like hundreds, if not thousands of times to like get used to like where to put it and like how to stick it in the right spot. But yeah, that's basically where I wanted to throw it, was right there. Um, in fact, I, I literally don't think I could have thrown a better bomb than than I, than I did here. Um, anyway, so when bombs goes out, I'm trying to force up the Zarya. Right, she dies. I remac right away to prevent Hansel from killing me, and now it's just easy. I see Kiriko's here. I'm forcing missiles to get her to go back right away. Hanzo kills two here, and I'm like, oh no, is he gonna actually contest this? But with me plus the Ana should be easy contest, or rather easy uh, cap. It's really hard for the Hanzo to get through me, even. If he's a great shot, right? See again, I'm not really trying to kill him. I like literally cannot kill him in this situation. It's all about just forcing him backwards. I take the cart, and right here, I'm just moving the cart right now. I know nothing's gonna happen. Like I cannot aggressively take this space right now because I know my team is respawning. You know, I need them all to come up here. I need them to, to get angles, right? I, there's no pressure being applied by my team, so I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just chilling here, I'm moving the cart. They don't stop the cart. Fine. So, you see I go around the right side of the cart to not take any damage, and then I'm going to dive high ground. And you also notice the opposing Zarya has gone D.Va. So, uh, she is going to try to mirror my play to prevent me from getting value. But the thing is, I'm also better than her at playing D.Va. <laughs> so, I, I know like when to attack and when not to attack. So, I'm coming up for you right now. Uh, we both pop missiles. She starts matrixing way too late. And the thing is, like I'm being healed here, but she's not. So, she starts taking a lot of damage. She's purple. I chase her down here to make sure I pop mech. Great, mech's popped. Go for the Widow, because she's Discorded right now, and she's the closest one. I see the Zen there. I want to dive. I dive in right now. I turn forwards to make it look like I'm going to go for main, and then go in for the for the burst kill on the Zen. Don't quite get it, but I do force Trance, and that's really important. right? I scare the Zen into trancing here by using nothing but my regular abilities. I didn't use ulti or anything. I DM, just get back to my team. Katsune's popped, and I just chill. Right? Both support ultis are forced out right now for nothing. Right? I didn't have to spend anything besides my regular abilities and shooting them. We lose two snipers. Okay, just leave. I'm probably going to save the uh, Hanzo. 
I DM here to make sure my uh, Zen doesn't eat a parting shot. I think that that's actually pretty close. Oh yeah, I totally saved my Zen's life right there. <laughs> just out of instinct, just seeing how far away from the corner my Zen was, I just figured that that running a straight line that he would get killed there. So I want to take right side because I heard the Widow over here. I go to the Mega, but I didn't realize I got healed up, so I didn't need it. Again, pushing the Widow back. Widow gets low. Diva's trying to fight me. I'm full health, so I'm totally fine taking this fight. Again, you notice the off angle, right? Not standing main, but off angling. Because I cannot contest the snipers from here. I can contest the snipers from here and going to high ground. I'm going to push the snipers down so they don't have good angles to kill anybody. Still get someone anyway. I'm just missling the Zen. I recognize, hey, we're down two. I get knocked off by the D.Va. Go back to cart. So I think we're even right now. No, we're up one. We're up one right now. So Diva Bomb goes out. I don't have a great opportunity. I've already used missiles, so I can't burst her down. So I just go back and to the Mega and reset. Anna dies, which basically guarantees that we cannot win this. I'm just moving the card a little bit more. Right, Dragon comes out. I'm just waiting for my team to respond, holding the space. Because one of the problems here, if I go all the way back, is that the, the snipers will set up again, and I have to risk them dying. But if I stay here, I can contest the snipers very quickly. Right, and I force the Widow back down. Diva comes up to me. I see that she's low, and I see that she used most of her Matrix. I nearly pop her out of mech. And now I pop Bomb. Why do I pop Bomb? Uh, Diva is on cooldown for thrusters. Uh, was it? The shit, no, she just dropped. Yeah, she just, she just dropped. Um, mostly, it is about the fact that this is a wide open area and there's no cover, right? Coming in from the left like this, I think only the Hanzo really has the ability to get cover. Uh, I guess they actually did a pretty good job getting this. Mm. Felt pretty good. I think that it's going to be the Zen here is going to die. And then the Kiriko here has a swift step to not die to this. So I still feel all right about that. I could have sent this. I probably should have popped it a little shorter. Yeah, I, probably, I should have popped it a little shorter. By the way, if you want to make your bomb go, go not as far, just point the nose into the ground and you'll lose a lot of the, a lot of the distance. I get nanoed here for some reason. <laughs> uh, nothing I can really do with that as Baby Diva. Uh, so these three, I, I heard them like all push to the right, plus they were all escaping bomb. I know they're all low. I see the purple. I'm going to Diva first. I don't even worry about Baby Diva. I want to kill the rest. All right, Widow dead. Baby Diva's gone. I'm going to kill his Hanzo. I could just boost it around sooner, but I didn't know if he was going to jump away from me. So once again, I know that I cannot take this point. It's really, really hard to take this point solo. Um, it, it's just because it's all, pretty much all third points on payloads are like this, where they're extraordinarily defensive favored, so it's hard for one person to carry it. You really need, as a tank, you need your DPS to help you take this point. Like, it's just, it's so hard to do it as a solo tank. Uh, unless you're like a super carry, like a Doomfist ball type situation, or a Zarya high energy, it's really, really hard to take the final points. Alone. Or, I mean, as in mostly alone. I knock her back. Great. Hanzo, force him off the high ground right away. I lost another widow, so we're gonna we're gonna burn a lot of time here, where it's just basically a, like a sniper duel. There's not a lot I can do about this other than to continue to disrupt the snipers and eventually hope that we get ahead in the pick race. So in this situation, I saw the, you notice the diva is DMing right right now. Okay, so she's DMing, so I assume she's lowish on DM, which is correct. I go for the widow right now that she doesn't have DM. Widow leaves, she DMs, I wait for DM to end, and then I activate missiles. And now I'm blowing her up with the missiles. She's also discorded. She gets super low. I pop mech. Right, that's basically as good as a kill. Uh, I'm confused why I'm not getting healing right now. Kiriko's being super aggressive. I see the Widow. I go back for the Widow again to contest. Right, force her down. Kiriko gets another kill. And they pop Katsune. I just knock her back. I understand Like we're not going to win this fight again. This is going to happen a lot. Reset. Go back high ground. Once again, we lose Junkrat. See, so yeah, this time I know that I'm behind in the race, like both DM and health, so I just try to get out. Erratic movement, very important to make sure you don't get demeked. We push again. The Widow's really extended. Zen dies again. Gotta go back. Like, that's just, that's just tank life. I mean, obviously, if I played, like, Orion or something that could shield this off more, that would be fine, or Winston that can go a little faster, but... I'm playing D.Va, so my snipers, for some to some extent, have to kind of like settle for for their own survival to give me time to get in. Right, I see the purple. I want to follow. I want to get the skill. I get it. 
Trance gets popped, but too late, but she's purple anyway. I sit on the Mega, right? I think I can win this fight. I pop bomb. Unfortunate here that nobody comes along. Uh, I get Nano here. Again, I did not want Nano. Zen dies again. I go straight for the Diva because she's discorded. She throws bomb. I want to kill her after this, but I recognize, oh, nope, there's too many people here. I want to go for backline. Get her low. I missile to force the Zen back. I see discorded on point. Kill her. Yep, great. Those those side attacks are so effective because you're going to hit almost every shot. All right, bumper. Kill her. Try to stay alive. Trance is popped. So with the trance, I commit. Kill the Zen. That's that's what I'm talking about for the burst kill. All right. He's full health here. I kill him so fast. <laughs> Will super low. Diva's low. I'm going to D-Mech her. Right, melee. Make sure she's D-Mech. Kiriko's here. She just Swiss stepped in so I can kill her right away. I see the baby Diva here. I want to make sure that she dies so she doesn't get mech back. Hanzo's going back in. I sit here to try to prevent the, the remech, and then that's a cap and win. Okay, cool. And that's the first. All right, next map is going to be Shambali. I think Shambali is a decent map for D.Va. I don't think first point is all that great, but uh, second point I think is I think second point I think is good. Three, third point is probably okay. Um, not not the not the best map. I think this map is just very strong for for pokey heroes just because of the long sight lines and high ground's okay here, but not so important. I hear three coming right side. I immediately come over. I want to just pop missiles in right away to get some spam damage. Getting bumped around a lot. I matrix right away to make sure that I don't die and lose mech. I chase the Hanzo here because I see that he's low. That the the Doomfist punch I think saves the Hanzo here because I'm trying to go for the melee kill and then I get stunned right before. That's fine. Still killing missiles. Kill the Doom. I see the maze here. Get her low. She blocks. Over here. I look around. I confirm there's nobody else here who can stop it. And I pop missiles and just kill her right away. Over here. You notice when I'm this close, I aim for the head. Otherwise, I'm usually aiming for the body. So just chilling. Go back to the spot. Reset. Just waiting. Ping who, ping who, who it is. Where they're going. I can see they've decided to not go stare anymore. So I'm just waiting for them to eventually go left. Doom jumps up top. I go in behind him. Pop missiles to burst him down quickly. He pops block. Great. Box good for me. Lucio's on me. It's very annoying for him to get in. He's super low. Kill him. I see the Doom's over here. I go to help my Ana. Alright, shooting the Doom in the back. I hear the Hanzo right away. I'm like, oh, okay. The Hanzo came out of nowhere. I don't know how I don't see this Han This Ah, he comes in. He comes in along my right side. So, once I realize the Hanzo's here, I'm like, okay, I should kill Hanzo first. But I'm too low right now, so I'm just going to stay alive. Doom. I'm purple. Just stay alive here. Just chilling. I know the Diva's here. Go for the Ana. I think I heard sleep. Yeah, I think I heard sleep at some point in time. Sleep and I obviously got hit by the grenade. So Ana's new cooldowns. Right? I know she doesn't have sleep. I know she doesn't have nade. I'm gonna dive her right now. You see, I'm not bothering to DM at all because I know she's low. At that moment in time, I knew sleep would be coming back up. I tried to DM the grenade, I miss it. All right, still working on the Ana, bumping her to make the movement easier to predict, right? If I bump her, she goes backwards in a straight line, which makes it easier to kill people. There are three here that are injured. I don't really have the ability to chase this down, but Genji does. <laughs> I probably could have could have dove in there with the Genji. So I'm just chilling. Now I'm playing up on cart. Just waiting and seeing what they want to do. Poking, poking, poking. Doom's going again. I'll get him right away to try to blow him up. He's going somewhere. I see. I come this way right behind him. I DM to prevent him from shooting. I want to confirm this actually worked. Oh yeah. See? <laughs> the Doom fires all the shots. Not able to not able to do any damage. That would have killed her otherwise. Uh, DMing people from behind. Very hilarious. He's purple. I'm trying to burn him down, but I hear the as soon as I hear the Genji, I stop giving. I give up on the Doom because he's gonna get cooldowns back in time anyway. Doom's still low. He pops block immediately. Jumps. Now I know he has no block. But the Moira is here, so I'm gonna kill the Moira first because my general rule is don't try to kill tanks when they're being healed. I see a low of the ashes, so I try to DM her so she can get out. Over here. 
Oh, I saw the Hansel to the left. Did I? Or is he through the wall? So, Ball gets slept here. The Doom's got Ball. I immediately pop missiles to blow him up. Right? He has to run away right away because of how much damage he takes. Mora is here. I start damaging her. She gets low. She fades. And as I tell people in videos, when she fades, figure out where she's fading to and see if you can kill her. Right? So, he fades backwards because there's pretty much only two ways she can go, right? Backwards or forwards. If he's forwards, I assume my team's going to help. If she goes backwards, I can kill her. Well, she's here. Even though there's missiles, I still am very confident. Or rather, Orb, I'm still very confident I'm going to kill her. I bump her. Make it a little easier on myself. Bam, dead. Hansel's trying to shoot me from behind. I don't want to lose mech. And then I come forwards. Chilling on cart. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Right, ball comes in. I come up to see if I can blow him up. He's not moving anywhere useful. I deflect from my Genji until he pops deflect, and then I stop doing it. Unfortunately, this pulls me out of position, so now I can't stop the Genji blade. So I'm looking at the situation. I'm like, you know what? I lost two. I don't have any healers. I don't really have the damage to do the, to like fight this, so I just sit here. I'm like, you know, what, I'm just gonna lose mech. Like you, you see that I, I have options here. Like I could, for example, just boost out, but I don't want to boost out here and then lose mech later. You know, so I'm just kind of sitting here. I'm like, you know what? That's fine. I just chill, stand still, let him kill me. Doesn't matter. So that's what I mean by like, don't lose mech unless you're intentionally losing mech. Like in this situation, I'm like, I cannot win this fight. Like mathematically, it's just not possible. So I'm not gonna bother. So initially I go for Bob before realizing that the team, this is a super unusual spot for them to be. Like for three of them to be high ground and the ball to be down here. They like reverse the offense defense positions, which is interesting. I should have picked up on this quicker. Then I realized I used missiles. I messed up here using missiles already. Right? I had much better targets. I could have used that to burst down the Hanzo or the Moira, for example. Uh, things have gone awry and I realized that I have screwed up terribly. I pop bomb here just in case because I want to try to contest this point if I can, but I'm not going to make it. Probably bad, bad, bad engage, bad missile usage, bad bomb. All in all, just not, not a good showing. So Genji's in a one-on-one with the Hanzo. I see Kiriko now. She drops. When she drops, I can't do anything about it. I get bumped there somehow. Working on this backside of cart. I drop cart because I feel like cart is kind of weak. It's hard for them to actually deal with me at close range. Bob, ball comes back. Great, that's fine. Now I reset. And now I force ball to use mines in like not a useful way, right? The ball comes back to just to mine me, but that's fine. I just walk away. Ball slamming. I DM here just to make sure that nobody can get shot when they get lifted. I go in, engage, right? I'm nanoed. Kirko low, Kirko dead. Moira's gone. I look for if anybody's below. Nope, there's a Moira. Moira must fade forwards. I don't have the opportunity to kill her. They just reset. Oh, I heard the I heard the sleep. I go here. Yep, just help me on out. So I drop in on them from the left because my team's already engaged. I shoot the Moira. Again, you see, like she's not able to out heal the damage that I'm dealing to her. Then she does this, which is crazy, but it happens to be walking in such a way that I can't quite get a lock on her. Like, I'm hitting her, like, reasonably, but I can't really get her with the missiles, which is annoying. So I'm going to kill her. Kiriko uses Swift Step, and she Swift Step to the Moira, I believe. I think I saw her Swift Step to the Moira. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there she is. So I see Kiriko Swift Steps, right? I start attacking her. She uses Suzu. I'm like, yep, easy kill. Both supports dead. Matrix to make sure I don't lose mech. Return to the team. So this is going to go poorly. So Genji has died right now. Blades popped. I try to weaken him down. I get him down two thirds of the way already, but without anybody else here to help, I'm like, eh, this is not gonna work. So I pop bomb. Yeah, not a great bomb. I should melee them. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's it's three on one. Tough to do anything there. I do not have a uh, bomb anymore. So I come over the top here just to make sure to save my. Uh, Kiriko, right, DM, make sure she doesn't die. I'm actually curious how close that was to death. Uh, close. I don't know how much I actually had to do with that, but either way. Bob has stalled cart. I'm going to pop missiles here to blow up the Moira. Baptiste is here. Pretty good tracking. Nope. That's good now. Once once I hear Hanzo Storm Arrows, I have to DM it. That does a lot of damage to D.Va. I want to chase the Hanzo, but he's like a little too far back, and I know people are spawning. I'm here. 
So this Genji walks all the way in on me. And I'm like, okay, cool, I'll shoot because I'm trying to force out deflect. He's just refusing to deflect. I could have just meleeed and killed him right now. This is not something that happens at Master slash GM. <laughs> he would have deflected pretty much right away to prevent that from happening. So I fly back to my team to reset. I realize the minefield is behind me. So I stop in the only place that I thought was safe, which is correct. I could have walked along the wall, but I didn't know that. Uh, and I stand still here and just hold Matrix, right? Get healed, right? I get nailed, I go back into the fight. I force uh, Mortar Fade, kill Lamp, kill the Hanzo. Uh, Mortar had faded to cart. I pop missiles here because I saw Fade just disappeared. And that's it. Okay. Map 3 is going to be Circuit Royale Offense. I think this is probably one of the worst maps for D.Va. Uh, very long sight lines, very sniper heavy. Um, it's really hard to dive anybody. There's a, there is like verticality here, but it's hard to just get to them as a tank that is not that slow, or not that fast rather, compared to like Winston or Ball or Doomfist. So this is not going to be a win, but it's a great example showing you of how of like where D.Va struggles. So I take the off angle, right? Get up close, I want to pressure the SIG. I'm breaking the shield so that my team can use it. Alright, again, waiting for my team to come up. Still waiting, still chilling. I see my Widow's playing really far away. No one else on my team can break that shield, basically. It like, has to be me. Working on the Sigma. So I'm offline. You see I'm on the side of the shield. I force Grasp out again. The Hanzo's there. I almost get D-Mech here. Just chilling. Get the Hanzo low. Breaking the shield again for my team. He withdraws it. All right now, the shield's broken for sure. I get slept by the Yana. He grasps, and I lose mech. Should I have lost mech here? I'm curious what my team is doing. I should not have lost mech here. Yeah. Oh my god, the duck. I mean, she does get a kill there, but otherwise, this is not going so well. It's tough for neither one of the supports to be looking at that moment in time. Uh, we get some kills here, which is great. I try to dodge a grenade, I can't. Come back again. More sniper fare. So Kiriko dies before I can even do anything. I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna wait. Reset. All right, we get a kill on the Widow. Get another kill. Great. Going for the Ana. Um, I was trying to see if she was going to sleep. If she didn't sleep, I just stayed low ground instead of going high. So Rock gets popped. I go out and control high ground. They pop Nano. I try to eat some of the damage and then move the cart. Storm Arrow got popped. I eat that. So I fly out of uh, Sigma ulti right away, I missile the Ana, but like nothing is really able to die here, so I throw bomb, hopefully I get multiple here. I'm actually curious where this bomb ends up going. It's actually not bad. Um, probably maybe, maybe a touch. Lower. Yeah, you see how close it is for killing that Widow? So close. And I died to the Sigma Splash. So we're gonna try again. Again, Widow kills two before I even get there. There's really nothing I can do about this. <laughs> Very hard time to be playing D.Va in this situation. Lots of damage. I dodge a rock. This is why Sigma's played so much in Circuit Royale, is because you can shield off snipers for your team, and then you can mirror the opposing Sigma, and just turn into a skill match. Versus here, like, I'm at a, such a disadvantage based on my hero choice. Like, my mobility is not that helpful, because I can't personally kill anybody as long as they're being pocketed, and the supports don't have anything else to do other than the pocket people, because there's not that much damage coming in. Like, if our whole team was dive, it'd be a different story. Like, if we're running Tracer, Pharah, Mercy, uh, you know, Zen or something, we, we could potentially walk over them. But in this lineup, we just don't do enough damage. Fast enough. 
Alright, we've got Brig now. So I see the Widow doesn't have grapple. I'm trying to kill her. And all these people have such small hitboxes. So you see how, how I step away from the, the main road here? Instead of here, I step back to here so that I can get shot from the right side. And I continue working on the Sig. He grasps. I don't know why the Brig is nailed right now. Again, I can't actually kill anybody in this situation. I throw a bomb just in case. Get a kill on the Widow. Hansel's still out there. I try to bump the Sigma, hopefully, into my team. He's going to rock me and lose mech. Final fight. Again, not a lot that I can do here. Like, I want to go after the supports, but they're, like, pretty far back here. When I saw the Brig eat that point-blank headshot, I knew the, the game was over. Yeah, once that happened, I'm like, I'm not winning this game. <laughs> there's no way. I mean, obviously, I needed the Brig to be alive there, but, like, if the, the enemy Widow was good enough to hit that shot, like, there's no way we're going to be able to win this game. Alright, kill her because she's standing still. But otherwise, you know, I don't have really have any health here. And that's going to be it. Okay. So I think this, again, really good example of how D.Va struggles against um, just long, long sight lines. I wouldn't say that D.Va's bad against Sigma in general. I think D.Va's probably okay. Uh, maybe Sigma's even like slightly favored if it's like a situation similar to this, albeit not as extreme. But you can see how helpless you kind of are against long distance snipers, which a lot of tanks are, to be fair. But D.Va in particular is like, there's not much I can do in this situation to carry the game. Okay. Uh, that's it for Circuit Royale. All right, next map is going to be Leijing Tower. Um, I think that Control, aka King of the Hill maps, are pretty good for D.Va. Um, D.Va plays, you know, a very burst assassin-y uh, style, almost like a like a Genji. So I think any of the maps that get more deathmatchy are better for her, right? Versus like long pushes, like King's Row, for example, or Circuit Royale. Um, I don't think this map in particular is that great for her, but it's not terrible for her either. Because there's long sight lines, there's no high ground in this situation, but going over the walls to pick up the Mega can actually be very, very valuable. So you start out here, I start challenging the Ryan. I probably shouldn't have gotten this close, I didn't expect him to just go straight at me, which actually I probably should have. I try to DM the Fire Strikes because it does a lot of damage and a lot of ult charge. I see right now, my read here is I see that there's two inside, right? The Kiriko and the Ride, and there's three in the outside, and my team is applying pressure. So I'm like, you know what? Why do I bother killing these two where I have to fight through the shield? Why don't I just go to the outside and kill these three? Because my whole team can see them on the outside. If I go in here and fight, I'm going to force the Ride to have to come after me, or else I'm going to kill the team. So Anna dies here. I shoot the fair, fair dies. I heard the charge coming in. Right? He charges. I immediately jump out of the way to make sure that he can't get me. And then, so Ryan tries to fight me at point blank, which is interesting. Uh, it's not a bad choice per se, but I have missiles up, which means I do a ton of damage. So that's why I'm saying like my burst window, 217 damage. So now I'm shooting him in the head while firing missiles. You see, he takes a lot more damage than he's expecting and just absolutely melted. Uh, I think she climbed the wall and then swift stepped out. Yeah, she's climbed the wall and swift stepped out. Hanzo gets a kill. I try to sit here to help the Mei. I don't know how many cooldowns we forced or how low they are. They are low enough. I need to come back. Somebody's finally capping point. Maze up here. I really do not want to be here. I'm trying to break the shield as fast as I can. Ryan's coming into me. Um, I, I can tell already. The reason why I don't, I don't boost is I can tell that the angle is off. So he bumps me out of the way. Right, DM. I get back to point because now I just want to die on point. Like I know this fight's lost. The question is how long can I drag this out, which is a core part of playing control. Right, Ryan charges in, I let him go past me, I go for the Hanzo who's isolated, try to kill him, gets super low. Oh, I drop him all the way down to like 10 health. I DM there to make sure my Kiriko doesn't die. There's no point in me dying a point now. Uh, they've already captured it, so it's irrelevant. I took a chance trying to kill the Hanzo so that we could maybe turn this around as a 5v4 after, as people respond. Ryan charges out, again I just step out of the way, I can tell that he's not going to be able to pin me. I blow up the shield as fast as I can because he's walled off. Dragon, or yeah, Dragon comes out. I see the Ryan shield is super low. Okay, so my Ryan he my, she my read here is the Ryan shield is extremely low. And I pop uh, Diva Bomb into the room. 
So again, it kills two. Did the Ryan actually still have shield? I think I... He does have shield here. Oh, it gets frozen. Yeah. So a combination of the of Blizzard plus Bomb is very effective. I obviously kill everybody on the point. We kill two more. Just the Hanzo alive. I want to cap first, and then I want to chase him down. He kills the, he kills the, the Moira with the Sonic over the wall. He, now he's killing another person on point. This is like another one of my games I played last night where Hanzo just killed everybody. I'm working the Rhine down. I see how low the Kiriko is, and I try to go for her. Yep. Tracer gets the kill. I'm trying to give the Rhine as much time on the point as I can because I don't want him to start swinging at me. Now I go for him. Play this fire. He makes a good play here, which is where he knocks me off the map. Um, I had like literally less than a second of boosters. I was holding it down um, as this happened. I still couldn't pop it in time. So good play by the ride. I didn't expect that play uh, by any means, but it was it was it was actually a pretty, really good play by the ride. But we still cap anyway. Just chilling, waiting, see what see what's going on. They're gonna switch to Zarya. So, oh yeah, I go I go left side because I thought I heard the Hanzo. Yeah, I hear the Hanzo on left side. You can see it through the wall. So I'm going over here to make sure he can't get a flank angle to kill anybody. I see the Hanzo's going, going back to main, so I go back to main. Sarah's there. I see she's walled off. I immediately go, pop missiles, and she dies. Uh, I don't know why she's walking out here without any bubbles, but that's a, a pretty pretty straightforward mistake from Zarya. So I'm going to fly into her and do a trick where you use the splash damage to kill her. Which almost works. It basically works. Uh, I'm gonna lose mech for it though, but I didn't have any missiles right now, so I can't burst her down very quickly. So this is pretty much the only option I got, and I was already pretty low on mech, I think. Yeah. I could I could have kept DMing. I'm trying to think, this was actually the right call here. Yeah. I, the problem is I DM and then and then I lost track of what was going on, and then I started DMing again too late. So I think this was the right call based on what was. The situation, my initial mistake of not DMing her correctly. Because I think I heard the boost up. Yeah. And I knew my matrix was low, and she didn't initially ulti. So I heard, as soon as I heard the boost, I'm like, okay, Farrah's gonna ulti me, because I was thinking about it earlier. Then I start holding this. But she fires that one rocket, which throws me off. And then I'm just too late. Good play by the Farrah. Need to reset. Now they've got D.Va. Just an interesting choice. Right, just putting damage in. I saw that Diva was low on cooldown on the defense matrix because she used it initially. Right, I'm low here. I'm gonna put bomb down. This is a mistake. So I should have. What I should have done is I should have chucked it here, right at the edge, uh, and make it unclear if it was gonna go out the door or not. And then that would have made it tough for them to make that call and to go outside. Alternatively, I could have chucked it into this corner. It would have also been fine. Um, they could have conceivably hit here. Yeah, I think the right call would have been to just chuck it straight here along the edge and have it like pop like right here um, and make it very, very hard for them to decide what to do about it. I think confusion is a very big part of Diva Bomb. If they don't know exactly where it's going to be, it makes it much harder for them to figure out where they should go correctly. But anyway, that's mistake number one. Number two is I should have gone. So when you Diva Bomb gets popped, you can hold a directional input to go out that direction. You can also hold spacebar or jump to go higher in the air. I should have held backwards and left away from this versus um, going towards them because I was trying to get kills with with uh, as the pilot, but that was not, not a good call. Um, also because this Hanzo is nutty. Hello. Ulti goes off. Right? You see, I cancel boosters to make sure he doesn't get knocked out of the blizzard, but he gets suzu out of it anyway. Right? That's fine. So trying to work him down. A lot of damage. I matrix, come back, pick up the mega. I go over the top. Now I'm off angling. Right? They're obviously not expecting me to be here. Unfortunately, they all just turn into me, which is not expected. I think Dragon is what's zoning my team right now. Yeah. Dragon, Dragon's zoning my team. I lost one. Kiriko. So I was gonna fly back over. You saw that that lift up. But as soon as I heard the my Kiriko come to me, I have to stay in here because she's gonna die if I leave her. Get the Ana low. I get the Ana super low. I didn't think I should have stopped shooting her here. Yeah, I should not stop shooting here. But she's very low. I still kill her. Going for the other support, right? As soon as I get low, I hear the diva shooting at me. 
right? I'm down to 50. I instinctively matrix, prevent the thief from killing me. I know they don't support, so we basically won the fight. I just wanted to not get DMAC. I got that really close. I got this too close. Yeah, I should have just held Matrix more. Well, I don't have a Matrix, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I Matrix basically everything. I should have Matrixed the final shots from the D.Va pilot, but other than that, I did as much as I possibly could have. D.Va just flying around the grid. That's a terrible way to dive at a target. Uh, anyway, this happens, and then we're going to cap the point, and then that's it. All right. Second point, we're going to do Control Center. I don't think this is a great D.Va map. Uh, very brawly, close range, like Ryan, Arisa, Zarya, really good here. Um, Murmatra, uh, D.Va, not, not so great. So I'm going to initially DM everything, because usually when people walk up, they spam everything they have, all the cooldowns, down the main. So I'm just eating all that damage, especially since they have the Junkrat. And you notice my positioning is that I'm going to stand here on the side of the D.Va and force her to have to deal with two directions at once. She can't DM both of us, which is going to cause her to start taking a lot of damage. Like I won't get healing here, but I'm going to guess correctly that my team plus me will do more damage faster than, her, than she can get healed. So I just confirm nobody's on my right. Damage, 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 right? Maywall gets popped. I know I pop missiles when I recognize her D.Va Matrix is getting low. I Matrix just to make sure nobody dies from that. And now I just stick point. I cannot dive these two because there's a Kiriko here. He's, she's just going to heal the Hanzo. I'm never going to be able to kill. And then I'm going to have the other three people, two and a half people, um, fight me. I'm just going over here to make sure the Junkrat's not going to kill my teammate. And we're just going to cap. Again, notice that I'm not trying to dive anybody right now, which is very intentional. Even even this Ana, I am not diving. Because I don't, I'm don't. i afraid of getting stuck in here with the two DVS behind me, and then the Kiriko can save the Ana. So even though Ana got quite low here, now I go. Because I think I hear her use Sleep Dart. Yeah. Oh, that was a really good... <laughs> Alright, well, let's, let's play that slow-mo. Yeah. Anyway, so I eat the sleep dart. As soon as sleep dart gets popped, now I go. Right? She dies. I also heard, I think I heard my Hanzo with me. Kill. Junkrat is coming out. I, you see how quickly I snapped the Junkrat as soon as he comes onto my screen? Because I see that he's low. Though, I not need it for me to kill him. I kill the Kiriko. And now we're just going to sit here for a while. So they're going to go as Ryan. Uh, making a classic mistake, just not paying attention to me at all. So he fire strikes. I don't even worry about blocking it. I just want to kill him as soon as possible. I probably could have flown to his side versus into him. I think that was a little bit of a mistake. I would say a significant mistake. Ryan charges in. Again, I have missiles, so I'm not worried about it. Plus, we have Maywall. Kill the Ryan. Kiriko goes in. Gonna kill Kiriko. And then we're gonna chill here for a bit. Oh, yeah. So Kiriko's gonna die here. And I'm like, wait, who's still alive here? So I see one in spawn. I see the Hanzo. I see he's low. So I'm gonna go for him to force him out. Yeah. He dies. Great. Ryan's just chilling here. Just breaking the shield. Don't need to be aggressive. We have point, right? Every second that goes by, good for defense. Bad for offense, good for defense. Ryan successfully blades the wall. Alright, missile him. Uh, and then, you know, my team dragons. I don't really need to do anything. <laughs> it's fine. My, my mortar also faded in to coalescence them, which was a mistake. So now I think we have no supports. Yeah, we have no supports right now, so I'm just calling for the team to back up. You hear the group up calls. I'm like, yo, just come back with me. <laughs> so we're probably going to lose this fight. Oh yeah, I hit a trap here when I'm like, wait, they haven't been on the point in how long? Like, how could there be a trap here? Like, this trap has literally been there like the whole game. <laughs> Think about it. Like, what was, like, it was literally like five minutes ago that this trap was placed. Anyway. Just holding the ride back. I can't I can't dive this for sure. Alright, I'm just waiting. He gets close, right? Puts on the shield, I activate missiles. Now I see the Hanzo. Alright, I see the Hanzo in the back, but now I have an opportunity to actually get to him because the ride is busy. I have a flank angle. Force the Hanzo out of cover. Ryan's going in. I'm pretty sure we're gonna lose this fight, by the way, because we lost two supports initially, and then we lost the DPS after that. So we're gonna be down in numbers this whole time. I see Tyre go. I look for the junk. I made the incorrect call. He was actually behind this. I knew he was somewhere very close to here, but I ran out of boost, so I don't know if I can get him anyway. So, Corpotan's activated. Try to kill the Ana. She grenades. I was trying to eat. You see, I'm trying to eat the grenade at the right timing. 
Alright, she waits, does a good job waiting there. She's not enough damage, and I, I try to get away and I realize I'm probably gonna die here. So I just wanna die on point. Again, just die. Reset. This is why 100 to zeros is so rare, is because usually the, the losing team stores up all their ultimates and pops them all at once. That was actually really good. Uh, so Brig recognizes the Rhinus here, she comes in and immediately uh, shield bashes him, which breaks his charge. Um, at this point, I then hold down Matrix to prevent her from taking any damage, because I understand everyone's going to try to blow up, especially the junk, the Brig. So, I... Oh no, she gets she's, she's trapped though. So I do DM to prevent the junk from, from killing her, and then I stand behind. Then that junk kills her. That kills her. I probably should have held it a little bit longer. I think I was probably being a little greedy. I fly away from the Nano Rhine. That Hanzo nearly kills me, which is what caused me to chill. I fly back to spawn, because I feel like it's faster for me to do this than risk demeching. De getting demeched here would be de devastating, right? Like, we have a huge advantage. All I have to do is keep mech there. Ryan's low. Dead. And I think we just cap and win. Yeah, we just cap and win here. Okay, that's Lee Jang Tower. Next up is going to be Havana on attack. I actually think D.Va is not bad here. Um, you can definitely contest the upper windows really well as D.Va. The primary issue is can you get to the windows, which is going to be problematic, right? If they have a very strong sniper lineup, sometimes your team just can't get set up for you to, to take the windows away from them. So probably more effective at lower ranks. At higher ranks, w worse, <laughs> for sure. Snipers are just too good at staying alive and like evading tanks. And supports are really good at preventing uh, snipers from dying. So I'm waiting till I get close enough to get off to the sniper. I don't know why I thought she was looking at me. All right, force the widow down. I couldn't destroy that mine in time, but forcing the widow down allows the tracer to kill her. All right, then we kill the, the mercy, and at this point, this is just a roll. I feel like people probably watch this game and be like, "Wait, why don't my games go this easily?" All right, kill the Anna. I know the soldier is low. I have no more matrix, so I have to fight this out. She demax me, which is really unfortunate, and then she dies, and I kill her Ramatra. I'm gonna chill for a while. This is why it's so annoying to lose Diva. Like, if I had some place to drop off the map, I would have dropped off the map right away. Again, you see that I'm trying to take these long range fights, aiming for the head to double the rate of ult gain. I come back up. I know the Aris has no spin. I pop missiles to try to force Fortify. So, Fortify now, I believe, has been popped. Yeah, it's hard to tell in the, with the colors. But Fortify has been popped now. Just kind of shooting her, chilling. Alright, shooting her in the head again. I don't have to fight anybody else right now. Like, I know I'm not going to be able to get here and do anything to them, so I'm just trying to kill the, the Orisa, especially now that her cooldowns are down. Because now she has no spin and no fortify, because I forced out both of them. So now you see I pop missiles right away. Again, watching back here. She comes up. All right, I pop missiles. Right, she pops fortify. Great. Right, missiles going to be up in six seconds. Just shooting her, DMing a little bit when I get low. Again, shooting her in the head does a lot of damage to her. She's trying to contest cart. Now I pop missiles again after fortify ends. Susa's popped, and now I just commit to killing her. Like, I know the Mercy flew by me, it doesn't matter. I, she's so low, and I know the D.Va does so much damage at close range against tanks that I, I'm going to kill her even with being double pocketed. I can kill her in this situation. So, I confirm, kill her. There's three here. I don't, I'm a little worried that they're going to be able to stall long enough to potentially cap it, right? There's a lot of deathmatchy aspect here. It'd be hard for me to kill such a evasive small targets, right? A Mercy, a Sojourn, and a Kiriko. They're all very small hitboxes, which is tough for D.Va to deal with. Winston, no problem. D.Va, I don't know that I can guarantee I'm going to win this. So I throw a bomb here just to make sure. Bomb, honestly, is not even that great in ultimate. <laughs> I know that you do get kills with it sometimes, but it's generally speaking, I would say it is not that great. So I'm going to throw a bomb here. Let me rewind back so you can see the exact timing. So for D.Va bomb, uh, the way that people usually talk about it is they're going to talk about what percentage of the boosters did you use. So for example, if you do it to here at 9 o'clock, that's a one quarter bomb. If you do it at 6 o'clock, that's a 50% a, a right, or half bomb, right? Then at 3 o'clock, this would be a three quarter bomb and so forth. And what that means is at the moment that you press Q, right, to pop the ulti. So if I pop ulti at one quarter, then the bomb is going to go off uh, after traveling quite a bit of distance. Right? If I pop ulti at, at 12 o'clock after the whole thing is run out, then you're not going to move at all. Okay? So the earlier you pop it, the further the bomb will go, is the way to think about it. Right? You pop it right away, you'll use the whole boost and fly out for two seconds and then explode. You pop it near the end, it's going to not barely have any forward velocity and it's basically just going to pop right away. So in this scenario, I want to pop a bomb that goes up over the point such that they cannot use the car or the cart or preferably the other truck as cover. 
because if they leave this, this, and this, they will not be able to contest the cart. Frankly, just this will be fine, but I want to make sure, right? If I pop it right here-ish, then they will not be able to cover from anything, and then they will die, and we will cap the point. So let's look at where it actually ends up going. So you see it comes up, and it comes back down, and this is a, a pretty good ultimate. Oh, that's actually pretty, pretty beautiful, too, even on low graphics. So you see, there's no way they could have stayed behind this. There's no way they could have stayed here. They obviously could not stand here. Right here would have been enough. Right here would not. Okay, and then over here, um, like here would have been okay. This, if you crouch, maybe you could have dodged it. Here, crouching for sure would have done it. But I knew my team's on the left, so it's mostly about the right side. So, pop the bomb. Again, I think I got through it. This is like a one-quarter ultimate. I want to confirm again. Yeah, I threw this pretty fast. So, um, if I threw it 50%, it would pop higher in the air. So at one quarter, it's going to come up, and then it's going to come back down a bit. But at 50%, it's just going to go up and pop in the air. There's a lot of a lot of different like mechanics with Diva Bombs. I think Poke, the old Owl player, um, has, a, has a Diva Bomb guide out there for how to do it. It's very, very complicated. <laughs> it's very, very complicated. There's a tremendous amount of skill with it. There's also lineups you can do, like CSGO style, for throwing them in very specific ways on maps to pop in very like optimal locations. Um, they used to be very important for 2CP. These days, you can just kind of wing it most of the time. Anyway, clean up. It's great. Stepping forward right now, not a great duel for me to take to take with a D.Va unless I'm getting healed, which I am. But I don't want to feed her too much ult charge. I'd shield, just go back, cart. My Kiriko is more interested in attacking than she is in healing, so it's fine. I throw missiles here. Missiles, by the way, have no fall off damage, so max damage at this distance. Um, and I'm just spamming for ult charge, just keeping the, the Arisa back. She's popped Fortify already, which I recognize. I'm getting a little closer. I should eat that, that Soldier and Disruptor. I think Soldier and Disruptor is one of the most important abilities in the game, not ultimate, that you should eat. It does a lot of damage, and it helps her farm ulti quickly. So she knocks me off with spin, which is a good call. I come back up with boost, and then I take this Railgun to the side. I immediately DM to make sure I don't die. I come out here to the Mega, DM to make sure my Mercy doesn't die. Arisa starts trying to chase me. I know Terra Search is coming. I can just tell, just body language. Like, she's coming in right now. I'm like, oh, this is Terra Search. So I just sit here, wait, 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 just fly out. Yep, great. Cassie tries to kill me. I think I'm going to get DMACC, yeah. I get DMACC here, and then I just give up and, and die. Coming back again. Just trying to take space. Um, obviously, not a great position for us to be in. We lose one right away. I can see that the Cassie is being pocketed, so I can't do anything right now. Reese is here. I can see the Kiriko's late. Working on the Kiriko. Alright, again, they've fortified, they've like way too much. I just go to the Mega. Reset, I see the soldiers alone on the side, get her low. I can't chase that because the supports are there. I come back. And there's a lot of patience involved with playing tank, right? Just like understanding, like, okay, no, this is not the right opportunity. No, this let's try this. Okay, that's not the right opportunity, try this. And there's a lot of patience that goes into the tank. Just reading, like, hey, can I actually do anything right now? No? Okay, cool, chill, reset. Again, a good off angle here. I DM this whole overclock, she dies. I don't think she gets a single shot off here. Yeah, see, that gets eaten, that gets eaten. Not that she was shooting, but there's no way that she could have shot. So I go straight for high noon. With the damage reduction, he doesn't die as fast as he used to, but um, he still takes a lot of damage. So I, I recognize, I'm like, look, I, I think I just want to kill him in this situation, especially if my team sees me flying at him. They're going to try to shoot him versus trying to hide. Uh, Genji deflected way too early. But regardless, he dies. Um, and I DM at the end, only after it would do enough damage to kill me. So, easy cleanup right now. I just want to make sure I don't get demacked. I'm going up here to stop the choke. Right, I do not want them to get a clean entry as much as possible. Allows the carrot to move for free. Right, eating a little bit of spam here for the junk. Not a lot I can do about that. I'm already out of DM, you can tell. Reese is going to come out. When she comes in, I try to go for a backline just to force out cooldowns. They're all chilling. Go for the Risa. Windows popped. I go behind the, the Baptiste, right behind the window to try to kill him. I get javelined. I go on point to try to contest the, the Arisa. The reason being is I know I have bomb here, so I'm going to use bomb at this opportunity to try to um, win the fight, right? On point. So 
Bomb ends up doing a ton of damage to her, right? She's she takes half damage because of uh, Fortify. I remech. I feel like how, I'm trying to curious what the timing was here. I think it was very close. Oh no, she she just popped Fortify. Did I know that? No, she pops Fortify in reaction to this, which is great. Yeah. So I remech behind the payload or the pallet stack to make sure that I don't get killed by the Arisa. Kill the Arisa. Go for the Kiriko, right? I knew exactly where she was stepping right away, because I can see the direction she's looking, and I see the Cassidy over there. Alright, so watch here, right kill. Go for the Kiriko. I can see she's looking at the Cassidy, so the second she blinks, I immediately snap over here. I kill her instantly. Cassidy's low. And then melee. And then that second point. Go for third point. I want to figure out if anybody got forward spawn. That is a, that is a no. So once I realize no one's gotten forward spawn, I can't do anything. Like, everyone's too far away, like, way outside of my effective range. I can't dive up here, because first of all, the Baptiste alone, with regen burst and clamp, can, like, basically kill me. <laughs> I think people, again, underestimate how much damage supports can do. And they have everyone spawning here. This is a ton of risk for no value. And, and it would feed the Baptiste, like, 50% ult charge if I tried to do that. So I just go back. I'm just gonna sit on the cart. I want to get healing from the Mercy, but she says no. <laughs> Alright, so now I see the uh, Risa here. Again, something to think about for all tanks. Play close, tight angles, right? Playing out here, more people shoot me. Play in here, nobody can shoot me, right? And I can play this close angle to shoot uh, the Arisa to force her backwards. It's fine, she pops fortified. Great, as soon as she pops fortified, I like don't even bother. I'm like, she's way too tanky right now. She's being double healed. Right, she pops spin. I now know she doesn't have fortify or spin. I activate missiles. Try to put more damage. I am quote unquote on fire. A system that doesn't exist anymore. So Terra Surge gets popped. Um, probably a good Terra Surge. I think it pulls in like, quite a few people. Yep. Uh, the problem is. Uh, no, it just pulls in. Just uh, does it pull in Tracer too? Yeah. The problem is we're just too evasive. Oh, Tracer didn't get pulled in. Just me and Kirko. So that's awful. She does a good job swift stepping to get out of that. Uh, so Risa pops spin. I know she doesn't have spin, but she does have fortify now. I'm trying to pressure her now because I recognize we should be able to win this fight because I saw the Baptiste die, so I'm like trying to push aggressively. Uh, we're going to lose Kiriko here and Genji. Cassidy gets super low, but he's being healed. I run to a trap. Tire's coming. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, if you want a tire to kill me, that's fine. Oh, man, are we going to win this? I think we might actually win this. <laughs> so, this is a situation where staying alive actually is very important because I recognize I'm going to be able to re-mech and take a fight right away. Shooting whoever I can, just get mech back. Cassidy's here, he's nanoed. I try to DM, make sure he doesn't kill anybody. Junker Queen's out. I want to focus Junker Queen first. Make sure she doesn't get enough regen to try to stay alive or some crazy clutch. Kill her. I see the fair in the air, shoot her. She gets low. I think she cussives off my face. What happens here? Oh no, I just bump her out of the air. That's what happens. Um, yeah, I lose track of her after the bump, which is a common problem for D.Va. It takes a lot of skill, skill I do not have, to be able to track people after you bump them, because it can be very random. Okay, and that is Havana. Last map is going to be Blizzard World. I think Blizzard World is probably a pretty good D.Va map. Um, First point, okay. Second point, great. Third point, okay. Um, but there's a lot of verticality in the second point in particular, and the first point has has some some verticality too. I'd say first point probably good. Second point, okay. Third point, or second. First point, good. Second point, great. Third point, okay. So first I clock, there's a Doomfist. I know he's not close. We get a kill on the Widow. I immediately go top right. I'm like, oh, there's two people here. I DM right away to make sure they can't kill me. They didn't even do any damage. Doom knocks me off high ground right away. That's fine. I come back to high ground. Right, take take an off angle. I'm trying to chase down the, the Zen. I don't want to use boost here until I know exactly what the situation is. Zen's going was going right initially, then goes left. I get him super low. By the DM now to not die. I see the Zen still low. I boost in, make get the kill. I wake up the Ana. She grenades. I fly over here to get the Mega. Again, that's like the mobility that Diva has that a lot of other tanks do not. So I'm trying to dodge the Cassidy right now, but the Ana is clearly not paying attention to me. Lose mech, and then we lose the fight. So, trying again. I want to preferably hold left side. Left side's the ideal way to clear this point. 
Doom's gonna punch. I recognize his punch is gonna miss. I try to burn him down. He blocks. I stop shooting him right away. And then he tries to punch me for some reason and then dies. I go in for the Ana. She sleeps. I'm trying to absorb grenade. I Do I actually absorb it? Nope. She's holding the whole time. Does a very good job here not popping nade. Then she finally pops nade. I see the Zen. Zen very easy to kill. Now I'm gonna kill the Ana. Great. Kill the Ana. Cassidy's here. He's the only one who can clutch. And kill him. Oh, the Doom's gonna come in here. Doom's gonna come in. Just waiting, waiting, waiting. Right, I don't wanna pop missiles yet because I don't want to interrupt it with punch. He's gonna pop Meteor Strike. He's super low. Now I'm gonna shoot him through block because he's that low. And then we're gonna cap it. I start by taking high ground. Very important in Blizzard World. I mentioned this uh, in previous guides. Doom comes out. With Doom out, I don't really wanna mess with both of them at once. Just putting pressure on the, on the Whittle to prevent her from killing anyone. Go back to cart. I just need to move the cart for now. You have no ranged presence, so standing high ground by yourself is not helpful. I need to actually be able to dive somebody. Right, so Doom tries to go in. I DM some of the damage here. I come back. So just reset. Doom's in again. Gets low. I try to blow him up missiles. Now I bomb. So the Doom has just used all his cooldowns going in, I believe. Yeah, though he will get it right before the end of this. And I can tell, because I know the layout of the map, if I can drop the bomb somewhere around here, I can kill a bunch of people. Which is exactly what happens. <laughs> that bomb was fantastic. Uh, I did not mean to clip it against the wall. <laughs> I, I actually should have sent it out a little further. But it works, and we'll take it. So that's what I'm saying. Is like typically I don't send bombs like that, but I recognize right here, like hey, I think I'm pretty sure this is gonna work. I wish the Cassie was out there too, but we'll take it. So you see, I, the Doom is slept, but I ignore him because I heard the Cassidy. So I want to kill the Cassidy first. Right. Cassidy dies. Doom's trying to escape. Go after the Doom. I see the Widow, right? I just want to DM, make sure she doesn't get a shot. Now I'm going to go after the Widow in a second. She makes the right call, which is to grapple way the heck back. She's super low. Can't kill her. And now I'm going to try to hold this high ground as long as I can. Okay, nothing really exciting is going to happen here. I'm just forcing them to spend time and resources to try to get me off this this high ground. you know. And I have a Kiriko with me, so I can have a pretty good amount of sustain. Right? He's going to, again, use all these cooldowns on me that have no impact versus using them on my supports or DPS. So, no problem. See, like that. He's going to go in. He's going to blow up my Widow. There's nothing I can do about this, though. I think she gets, eats another shot, too. So, Meteor Strike is landing. I immediately jump off. I recognize we're probably not going to cap this. Uh, I see the Ana super low, and I get punched towards her. Great. You see the Doom pops block right away. One thing to think about mentally is recognizing, like, look, Doom, Genji, right? They have abilities that you don't want to shoot them for. So when I start shooting, like, I'm already thinking about the block, which is why I'm so able to so quickly shift targets. You know, in real time, watch. I kill the Ana. Come back, shoot the Doom, immediately switch over to the Kiriko, right? Get her low. I'm looking for her. Right? Cassidy dies. I get punched again by the Doom. Trying to DM. Trying to stay alive. I think she needs to reload here, is my guess. Because otherwise I should have lost back here. Yeah, she has to reload. And I kill her just in time. Yeah. These kind of uh, kills are very, very um, mechanically intensive, right? It's just like, hey, do you have the right movement, aim skills, etc.? Probably should end it with a melee. So Doom's blocking, but not towards me, so I can just shoot him. Because I was waiting for Booster cooldown to come back up. Alright, he's, he's low and he's hacked, and we cap. Come up, take the uh, forward. I'm looking for people who spawn. I hear the Cassidy. I'm pinging it. So, I'm gonna activate missiles. I kind of miss with the missiles, which is unfortunate. I'm like a little curious why I'm not being killed right now. Because you see, this is a really common problem that happens in low ranks where multiple people are standing on the cart. One of these two should be up here, like healing me, which is what I'm used to. And when I realized my mistake, I'm like, oh shoot, and now I'm gonna lose mech for this. I don't pop bomb because there's no reason to. And just uh, die here. Nope, don't die. Maybe don't die. Oh yeah, I'm gonna die here. Again, all if just one of the supports came up and healed, that would have been would have been totally fine. But it happens. 
Anyway, coming back out again. Uh, they have Junker Queen now, so I'm looking for opportunities. I think I just saw her shout. Yeah, I just saw her shout, so I know she doesn't have shout now. I'm waiting for an opportunity to blow her up. She goes in for the cleave. I see purple, I immediately go for her, right? Full commit. Kill. I matrix to make sure nobody can kill me after that. Moira's low. Kill the Moira. Alright, Sombra's in, so I go for the Cassidy. Cassidy's super low. Still trying to kill the Cassidy, even at longer range. Soldier in low. Great. Just shooting people as they come out of spawn. I don't know what happened with that boost. I'm mirroring the, the Junker Queen to make sure she can't do anything. She gets Suzu'd. Get her low. I get Nanoed here, which is not expected. I go for the Moira, because I think the Moira faded in. She dies. I go for the Sojourn, even though I'm being attacked, I just don't care. Like, with Nano, I just I don't take much damage. Unfortunately, I think I kill basically three-ish. I try to kill the Kiriko here. I'm like, thinking about the reason why I'm saving boost here is because I'm expecting her to Swift Step if I boost into her. But either way, I don't think we could win that fight because we don't have enough left and they have short spawn. I just, even if I kill the Kiriko quickly, quickly-ish, I don't think we can win this fight. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're winning this fight. Especially since they pop Coalescence after. So, save, save ulti, which is a good call. Coming back out again. Uh, our Kiriko's dead right now, which is why I'm just chilling. I don't really want to fight right now. Uh, I think what happens? Soldier jumps in. Uh, Soldier jumps in, I try to kill her. Right, get missiles, she gets low. I think about boosting, but that would have been bad for me probably. Like, she's already being supported. A lot of damage here. Try to change up the angles by going to the left. I see the Hanzo high ground. I'm thinking about throwing a bomb here after this, but unfortunately I get killed before getting to him, which is not expected. Um, I probably should have bombed, is what I was thinking after. Even though I got the mech unexpectedly, I think the right call was still the bomb, just get mech back. Yeah, we're actually going to cap this without even me needing mech. Okay! Um, hopefully, overall, this uh, gameplay guide for D.Va was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see anything else.